Hey, hey, party people, it's Lycona de Chichi, and welcome to the easy peasy guide for Eden's Promise Anamorphosis Savage, better known as E11S. Before we start, click on that like button and subscribe to the channel so more adventurers like you can get their clears. However you want to support the channel is cool by me. And with that out of the way, let's get started. We place our markers in this configuration. You'll notice that the colors of the markers are on opposite sides of each other. This becomes important with handling a mechanic later in the fight. You'll also want to assign clock positions, tank, healer, and DPS partners, as well as tank partners and healer DPS teams for your group. For this fight, we found it easier to use boss relative north for clock positions rather than true north. The boss spins around a lot through this fight, so it's easier to reference his position rather than the stage. So whenever I reference cardinal directions, it's always going to be boss relative throughout this guide. The mechanics of this fight also come out pretty fast, so just be ready to react to this fight as it keeps you on your toes. First up is Elemental Break. You'll see this ability throughout the fight, and its mechanics will change depending on what element the boss is channeling. There are three elements throughout this fight, fire, lightning, and light. You'll know what element he's channeling by the giant animation on him. We'll just go over each element as they appear in our clear video. Just remember, you may get different elements at different times during your run. Just handle those mechanics in the same way. For this first elemental break, it could be either fire or lightning. In our case, it's with the fire elemental. You'll want to get into your clock positions, and as soon as you see that cast bar finish, cone AoEs will hit everyone in the party. After that, move to your assigned partner. On a side note with all of the elemental breaks, I suggest you move as soon as you see that cast bar finish to give yourself a bit more time to get into position. The cone mechanic snapshots at the end of the cast, and while the animations look like it hits other people, it doesn't. Next up is Burnt Strike, which is where the boss will cast a line AoE going through himself like this. It could be charged with either a fire or a lightning element. In our case, we got fire. This means that there's going to be a knockback coming from his line AoE. You'll want to position yourself on either side of him, wait for the line AoE to go off, and then move into the middle of the stage for the knockback. You'll have to move in because if you stand at the edge of his AoE, you'll most likely get knocked off the stage. You can also use your anti-knockbacks here. Next, he'll cast Bound of Faith, which will put a prey marker on a single party member. Same as the previous mechanics, the boss will either be charged with a fire or a lightning element. In our case, it's lightning. We had the person with the lightning prey marker go stand with the tanks at the front of the boss, while the party chills at the back. Tanks will want to stand on the left and right side of the lightning prey person because two lightning cone AoEs will come out as the prey explodes. Tanks will want to bait these lightning cone AoEs away from each other and away from the party. Next up will be Burnished Glory, which is a raid-wide AoE that will put a bleed debuff on everyone, so heal up accordingly. Next, he'll cast Powdered Mark, which is the tank buster, so do your normal tank swap here. In addition, he'll also put an exploding AoE debuff on the tank. Keep this in mind for the next mechanic, which is Turn of the Heavens. Giant fire and lightning circles appear on the stage. In our case, the boss was charged up with fire. Thus, the orange fire circles will get buffed, and their AoEs will be bigger than the blue lightning circles. Now, you'd probably expect me to say, watch for this element buff and dodge to the safe circle accordingly, but for here, standing near the lightning circles is always safe. In all of our pulls during progression and reclears, this was always the case and we have no idea why. So unless something changes in the future, the party should go and stack here, while the tank with the exploding debuff should stand about here. It's okay to run under these circles if you need to, but just don't stand underneath them when their AoEs go off. The boss will then jump back to the middle and cast Burnt Strike, which can be either fire or lightning. Also note here that for whatever element you got during the first Burnt Strike, you'll get the opposite element here. For us, we got the lightning element. The boss will cast the same line AoE going through his middle but then that line AoE will hit again and get pretty thick. So you'll have to disengage. Bound of Faith comes up again. Like before, it will always be the opposite element than the first one you got. In our case, it was fire. So the person with the prey marker just stacks at the butt with the party and everyone shares the AoE damage. Then move immediately into your clock positions for an elemental break. Again, it could be either fire or lightning. For our run, we got lightning. Cone AoEs will hit everyone and you'll want to spread out away from each other. Range and healers should disengage while melees can take up the cardinal spots at the boss. The boss will then cast Shifting Sky. Pay attention to his element here as it could be either fire or lightning. Just like the circles from before, whichever element he charges up with, those circle AoEs will be bigger. Thus, the opposite element is always the safe element for this mechanic. So if you got the lightning, stand near the orange fire circles that are safe. And if you got fire, like we did in our case, 
standing near the blue lightning circles, is safe. He'll jump away and a knockback will come out from the center of the stage. I suggest always getting knocked back here. There's a sneaky AoE that appears under the center circle, so getting knocked back here helps to avoid this. That AoE circle in the middle also stays up for the rest of this phase. Two people except the tanks will get a tether attached to them with a prey marker. If you have a tether, you'll want to look for which ad you're attached to on the outside of the stage. That ad will then cast an element on them that's either fire or lightning. If you get the fire element, or the fire tether as we call it, you'll want to stand with the party. If you get the lightning tether, then you'll want to stand with the tanks. The prey markers explode in the same way as before. The party will soak the damage from the fire prey, while the tanks will stand on either side of the lightning prey and bait the lightning cones away from the party. Once those preys go off, look towards the outside of the stage and find the ad who's casting the lightning element. That ad will place a lightning AoE through the middle of the stage, so it'll be a wide boy. Then another ad who's charged with the fire debuff will cast a fire line AoE through the center of the stage, perpendicular to the lightning line AoE. If you remember, this will also be a knockback. So if you have your anti-knockbacks, you can just go stand in the corner and dodge both easy. But if not, you'll have to shimmy around and dodge the lightning AoE first, and then the fire line AoE. After this, come back to the middle and get into your clock positions. He'll cast Elemental Break, so do the mechanics for this properly, if it's either fire or lightning. Burnished Glory comes out, which places the bleed debuff on everyone. And you'll want to get back into your clock positions again and get ready for Elemental Break, but with the Light Element charge. This Elemental Break will always cast the Light Element, so Cone AoEs will hit everyone like usual, but now you'll want to get into your tank partners and healer and DPS groups. He'll then throw out Burnt Strike, which is his line AoE going through the middle of the boss. Since this Burnt Strike is with the light element, move to his sides and then you'll want to wait a moment here before you move. Once the line AoE disappears, he swings down his sword in front of him and you can see a little light pulse coming from the bottom. At this moment, your character places down an invisible AoE on the stage. To understand the timing for this mechanic a little bit more, let's go back to normal mode for a moment and see how this mechanic plays out when we can see the AoEs on the ground. You can see that the AoEs appear as soon as his sword hits the ground in front of him, and that's when you move. As usual, be careful not to move too early before that flash, or else you'll place down that AoE in the wrong spot and you may kill others in your party. He'll cast Bound of Faith, which will put a light element prey marker on a party member. That person will stay away from the party. And for us, we just have that person stand at the front of the boss while the rest of the party stand at the back. Next, the boss will cast Burnish Glory, but at the same time, the person that had the Light Prey marker explodes, causing raid-wide AoE damage. So, it's a double AoE hit with bleed damage. Powdered Mark comes out next, which is the Tank Buster with the delayed AoE debuff, and now he'll cast Reign of the Heavens. Again, pay attention to his element here, which could be either Fire or Lightning, and in our case, since he's casting Lightning, the Fire side is going to be safe. Four giant squares will appear in this configuration. Two orange fire squares and two blue lightning squares. These squares will soon cast either skinny or thick AoE lines going through their middles depending on which element charge they just got from the boss. Take a look at this overhead graphic. If the lightning squares are charged up, the line AoEs look like this. If the fire squares are charged up, then the line AoEs coming from each squares look like this. There's always going to be three safe spots where you can stand. So in our case, since we know the boss charged up with the lightning element during the cast, we know that the skinny line AoEs will be on the fire square sides. Thus, we know where the safe spots are. We have the party stack close to the middle on the safe side, in this case on the fire side, and the tank with the explosion debuff stand at the edge of the stage in their safe spot on the left respectively. The boss will jump back to the middle and cast Burnt Strike. Pay attention to the element here and dodge this line accordingly. Bound of Faith then comes up next, so the person with the Prey Marker stand in the correct position while the rest of the party does the same. Get into your clock positions for an elemental break and do your respective elemental mechanics right after. Next, he'll cast Sundered Sky, which will charge up with an element, either fire or lightning, and in our case, it was lightning. The four giant squares will pop up on the stage again. There will also be a knockback from the middle. You'll want your whole party to get knocked back towards the element side the boss just charged up with. If it was fire, you want to get knocked back to the fire side, and in our case, since it was lightning, we wanted to get knocked back towards the lightning side. The reason for this is that the dragon ad will come down into the center and target one person at random and then throw 
out an AoE cleave. So essentially, when we get knocked back, we're also baiting that AoE cleave coming from the dragon in the center. After the knockback, you'll want to go around the outsides of the stage to the safe side. Be careful not to go through the middle because there's a sneaky AoE puddle under the dragon. At the same time that happens, two people will get prey tethers attached to them coming from two adds on the outsides of the stage. If you get a tether, you'll want to look and see where your tether is coming from, look at that add, and see what element it's casting. It'll be either a fire element or a light element. Whoever gets the fire prey will want to stack with the party, and whoever gets the light prey will want to take the safe spot away from the party at the edge of the stage that's on the right side respectively. Once the AoEs go off and the giant squares disappear, three adds will spawn on the outside of the stage. The light, the lightning, and the fire add. These adds do their thing like you've seen before. The light add will place an invisible AoE down on your character, then the lightning add will cast a thick line AoE going through the middle, and then right after that, the fire add casts its line AoE, which is a knockback going right through the middle. To handle this, after those giant squares disappear, Look for the lightning and fire adds, then go to one of the markers that don't intersect with their line AoEs. Find the light ad, look at him, and wait till you'll see his sword hit the ground with the little light flash, then move to the edge of the stage. Pop your anti-knockbacks here, and just wait till the lightning and fire line AoEs go off. It can be a bit tricky to get your positionings right, because it's a bit chaotic, but the idea for this dodge strategy is to get into position once, then move once, taking out most of the guesswork. Also note that the adds will always go off in this order, the light add, the lightning add, and then the fire add. Come back to the middle and get into your clock positions for elemental break, then do the elemental mechanics that come out. Burnished Glory comes out next, which is the AoE hit with the bleed debuff that appears on the party. He'll cast Turn of the Heavens, and his element will either be fire or lightning. This time we'll get a different configuration of the red and blue AoE circles around the stage. Just like before, depending on which element he's charged up with, those same circles will explode with bigger AoEs on them. So you'll want to stand on the circles that's the opposite of what he charged up with. For our case, since we got fire, standing near the blue lightning circles was safe. But everyone will have to disengage the boss and go stand in their relative clock positions at the edge of the stage to handle this mechanic. As you make your way towards your safe position, he'll cast Elemental Break. Look for the element he's casting now, and if it's lightning, you need to spread away from each other, or if it's fire, you need to stack with your partner after the circle AoEs disappear. Next, he'll cast Powdered Mark, which is the tank buster, which places that exploding AoE debuff on a tank, and then he'll cast Right of the Heavens. Again, look and see if the boss is charged up with either a fire or a lightning elemental. The party will stack on the safe side near the middle. The tank with the exploding debuff should take one of the outside safe spots, while the person who gets the prey marker will need to check to see if the boss is casting a fire or a light elemental debuff. If it's fire, you'll want to stack with the party, if it's the light debuff, you'll need to take the outside safe spot opposite the tank away from the party. Now he'll cast Prismatic Deception, and here's where our markers come in handy. Everyone will take their clock positions on the edge of the stage. Eight adds will spawn on the clock positions on the outside of the stage, but only you can see your own and nobody else's. If your ad raises his sword like this, then that ad will soon cast a line AoE going through the middle. The safe spots are at the edge of the stage on the line where the two opposite adds did not put up their swords. This is where our markers come into play as the opposite marker is the same color. If we see the ad raising his sword, we call out our own color in voice chat. If a color wasn't called out, that color marker is now the safe spot. But there's an easier way to do this without using voice chat. Get into your clock positions around the stage, same as before. This time, you'll want to pay attention to two things, your ad raising up his sword, and your partner who is directly opposite of you on the other side of the stage. If you see your ad raise up his sword, you'll run into the middle. If you see your opposite partner run into the middle, you also run into the middle. If everyone follows these two rules. You'll see two players standing on the outside of the stage who haven't moved. Those two players are now the safe spots because each one of them did not see their ad sword being raised and did not see their partner move into the middle. After all that resolves, come back into the middle, the boss will spawn and he'll cast Burnished Glory again, which is the raid-wide bleed AoE debuff. And the final mechanic we'll see is the Cycle of Faith. Now, you've seen all of these mechanics before. The boss will charge up with an element, either fire, lightning, or light, and one person will get a prey marker. Whichever element he charges up with, 
the mechanics that come out immediately after the cast will be the same as that element. You'll always get one fire, one lightning, and one light cycle of faith, but the order in which they come out may be different for each run. For our clear video, we'll just go in order for each of the elements that came up for us. For the fire cycle of faith, you'll want to get into your clock positions, then stack with your partner, move to the sides as the boss will cast a line AoE through his center, prep for that knockback, then move back under the boss and stack with the person who has the prey marker. He'll cast Burnish Glory again, putting a bleed debuff on everyone. For the light cycle of faith, get into your clock positions, tanks stack together, DPS stack with your healer groups, move to the side, then bait those invisible AoEs, then everyone should move away from the person that had the prey marker. The person's prey marker will also explode while another Burnish Glory cast comes out, so it's double AoEs at this point. For the Lightning Cycle of Faith, get into your clock positions, spread out after the cast, get on his sides and disengage far out to dodge his line AoE. The person with the prey marker should go to the front of the boss and stand near the tanks. The tanks will point the lightning cones away from the party while the party chills at the back. He'll cast one more Burnished Glory and then cast his Burnished Glory in Rage. And if your DPS is good enough, congrats, you got your clear. Thank you to my raid team, all of our friends on Behemoth, and my raid leader for developing the strategies for this fight. Give them a shout out in game if you see them. And thank you to all you guys out there who make the raiding community a better place for everyone. I sometimes get messages in game saying how these guys have helped you and your teams get your clears. I love it, it's awesome, and it makes me so happy to hear that. Thank you for supporting the channel and liking the video to help more folks like you get their clears. So until next time, see you in E12S, and keep on adventuring.